So Sunil, let's begin with how and when you got into theatre. Um, did you have friends, relatives, family? I studied in a residential school, so I was away from from Bombay for about seven or eight years. So from the age of perhaps nine to about 16 or 17. Mm. So I came back at that time. But I was fortunate to be in a school where theatre was considered to be... I mean, it was quite active theatrically. In fact, at that time, it's quite amazing that we had a dedicated theatre teacher, one Mr. Madan. Mm. And so in the early years, like any you know new student, mm. you're kind of you know grappling to find some kind of space for yourself. And one day in class, Madan sir said, you know, I'm doing a play, who wants to be in it? And I put up my hand because, you know, you wanted to belong in some way. So I just, and so that's how it started really. I started hmm. acting in school plays when I was nine, nine and a half. Hmm. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I mean, it was something that, and you know, hmm. when you're acting in a school play, then everybody gets to know you. So, you know, it's hmm. part of that. Hmm. You start belonging. Hmm. Uh, my principal there in that school, uh, Dr. Balasundra, was a very interesting guy. He would sort of travel a lot as part of his work and he would meet all sorts of very interesting people and he would sort of tell them that, listen, why don't you come and work with our students? Mm. I'll offer you a reasonably nice place to stay, a room to stay, mm. um, a whole bunch of very bright kids who mm. are very enthusiastic. It's a beautiful place because I was at Rishi Valley, so mm. it's a very, very beautiful location and I can't pay you but you can work with the kids, mm. month, two months, as long as you want. So. You know, in the 60s, a lot of people took advantage of this kind of an offer. So we had very interesting people come by. One year, one year we had Roshan said come. And mm. Roshan had just come back from the UK at that time. So he was fresh from the excitement of the whole performing arts scene in the UK. Mm. He'd worked with people like Pink Floyd. And it was all very, it was all amazing for us because, you know, he and he was also a bit of a, he still remains to be a kind of a weird guy. At that time, he was like, you know, it's like a guy from outer space for us. Very exciting to see someone come into a small place. So, Roshan said, for instance, did a lovely production of the play within the play of Midsummer Night's Dream. Uh, and he is the first time I heard the word environmental theatre because we used to have a beautiful old banyan tree there, very old banyan tree with roots. Mm. And there was a stage there. And a lot of classical dance ballets used to be done there. Mm. And Roshan said that, look, we're going to do a play here. So we all entered as, you know, the villagers taking part in the play within the play. We came in through the mango groves around the banyan tree onto the stage. Mm. And it was like, wow, a completely different way of doing theatre because Madan sir was fairly conventional. Mm. But then someone like Roshan said came and just opened it out. Mm. And I think that interaction with Roshan said made me realize that there's a world out there in the theatre, okay. With Madan sir, it was different. Uh, he was very gentle, but mm. you kind of lived within the world of school theatre. Mm. But with Roshan said, he brought the outside world mm. and that excitement. So I think at that point, I kind of decided that this was a world worth exploring, not in any very great conscious way. Mm. Then a few years later, Dina Pathak mm. landed up at my school mm. again mm. through one of these strange kind of, you know, encounters with the principal. Mm. And I remember she walked into our huge dining hall and she said, is there a Sunil Shanbagh here? And I said, oh my God. And I kind of ducked under the table because no one likes being singled out. But because of the CPI, Communist Party of India background, mm. she knew of my aunt and my mother who were also, you know, in the mm. student wing of the AIS, mm. AI, All India Student Federation. Mm. So she had heard that, you know, one of their sons was in the school. So, mm. and so she decided to do a play and it was just logical that I would be in it. Mm. And that was the first play I did in Hindi. Till then it was all English, English. Mm. And that was quite an important experience for me, I remember, because I was much older then and uh, it felt really nice How to me. I must have been about 13 or 14 by the time Dina Ben came. So, you know, I was, at, yeah, I'm sure I was at least 14. Mm. And that experience was fantastic because again, Dina Ben brought a completely different world of Indian theatre. What play was that? Uh, we did a very interesting Gujarati, originally a Gujarati play, a folk play. Mm. Uh, I think it's a Bhavai play uh, called Mithya Abhimani. Mm. It's about a, it's about a kind of an egoistic, arrogant Brahmin mm. who can't see. He's an older man. He can't see in the dark. He's got night mm. blindness, mm. and he comes to marry this young girl, mm. and uh, his travails in the night because he refuses to accept that he can't see in the night. Okay, so it was one of those and very funny. Mm. And I remember working in Hindi for the first time. I suddenly knew what to do with my hands. You know, as actors, mm. you're always very conscious, of, especially when you're you know mm. inexperienced. Mm. Your hands are all over the place. Mm. You suddenly don't know what to do with your hands, you don't know, what to, your body mm. feels awkward. But I remember this distinctly, I don't know why, but I, I suddenly when I was doing that Hindi play, 
I didn't have, I just felt completely at home. So that was a very important experience. And uh, Dina Bin told me that, uh, you know, Sunil, I have a daughter who's roughly your age. So when you're in Bombay, why? And she's also interested in theatre. Mm -hmm. Come meet her, Ratna, her name is she, you know. <laughs> so I did that in my summer holidays when I went back. I went across to Dina Bin's place and they were very, very warm and very, very. This is when you were 15. Yeah, well, by the One time the I vacations. came back, I must have been about, yeah, about 15, 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was just before I left school. So it must have been a year, a year and a half before I finished. And I came and I went across and met Ratna and we got, you know, we became friends and I used to spend time with her. And one afternoon when I was at Ratna's place, the doorbell rang and this slightly kind of, you know, crazy looking guy walked in. And he said, ah, Ratna Beta, do you have any serious reading? And she said, uh, well, Dubey Kaka, she's calling Dubey Kaka or something. Yeah, Dubey. I, uh, he said, yeah, I'm looking for comics. <laughs> so she gave him some comics, he went inside. And that was it. And she just introduced me, this is my friend Sunil. And he said, ha ha, hello, hello. And he went and he disappeared. And we didn't see him for the rest of the afternoon. And that was my first encounter with Dubey. And... Uh, what year would this be, Sunil? This must have been around... Well, by this time, I'd finished school. So this must have been 73. Okay. And about six months earlier, when I was here on a holiday, uh, Ratna said, well, there are some interesting plays happening at Tejpal. Hmm. Where is this place in Gowalia Tank and you should come and see them. So we both went and I remember that we got student concessions. So it was very cheap for us to watch. We just had to show some identification hmm. and we got student concessions. And I saw two of Dubey's plays uh, and I remember being completely blown. Uh, especially by the, the first play was a play called Anushthan, which was a very, very abstract, very physical theatre type play, you know, very, hmm. very lot of lot of physicality and very intense kind of play, very choreographed, very tight. And at the end of the play, when the lights, we must have been what, 20, 25 of us in the audience. And nobody knew that the play had ended. So we all sat and looked at, and he said, oh, it's over. And then you clapped. And it was that kind of a play. Mm -hmm. Then we didn't go the next day. Interesting, it was Adhi Adhure the next day, but we didn't see that. On the third day, we went to see Hevadan. And Hevadan completely blew me. I mean, I just couldn't believe that this could be, you know, a form of theatre. And it had amazing performers. It had Amrish Puri, it had Amol Palekar playing the two men, mm -hmm. and it had Sunila Pradhan playing the woman. Mm -hmm. so, and then Dina Ben played Kalima in that. The, you know, so it was a big cast and it was quite an amazing performance. Mm -hmm. And after the show, as we were leaving Teshpal, Pratna had pointed out Dubey to me. You know, he was sitting there and said, that's the way that I was actually directed. So it was all, you know, very... And then I met Dubey in this manner as I described it. Uh, so about a week or ten days later, Ratna called up and said, listen, Sunil, uh, Dubey is casting for a play and he wanted to know if you'd be interested. And I had a lot of time because I had come back, finished mm -hmm. my school in December, you know, ISC. Mm -hmm. So you finished in December and then college didn't begin before June, July. Mm -hmm. So all ISC students got that six, seven months of yeah. free time. Uh, you know, almost like the gap year of today's mm -hmm. year. So I had got very involved in teaching and all sorts of things. But I was really, I had time. And when this offer came, I said, of course I want to act in this. I want to work with Dubey. Mm -hmm. Not knowing what I was going to get into. It was just a you know shot in the dark. Mm -hmm. And a couple of days later, I got a call from Amrish Puri. Hello, very deep <laughs> voice. And he said, you stand on the road and I'll pick you up in my... So he used to ride a motorcycle with a sidecar in those days. And Where he did he stay? He stayed very close to my place here in Santa Cruz at the station, mm -hmm. but he used to work as the branch manager of Employee State Insurance Corporation, Kolaba. Yeah, he was a branch manager there. He used to, he was a government servant. He had a little desk and a little mm -hmm. office with government curtains. I, mm -hmm. I met him there a couple of times. And that's, that was his job. That was his day job in the evening because he had not really made it in cinema at that time. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was an actor like any other, mm -hmm. but he was one of Dubey's main actors. Mm -hmm. And he used to commute on his motorcycle with a sidecar. So I sat in his sidecar mm -hmm. and I was whisked away to rehearsal and that, that was the beginning. We were doing, Dubey was doing a play called Garbo, uh, mm -hmm. written by Mahesh yeah, Kulchwar. Sure. And Dr. Lagu had done it and it hadn't worked very well. Where were these rehearsals? Uh -huh. So we began rehearsing, well, uh, I was taken to Andheri, mm -hmm. uh, Dhake colony, mm -hmm. to this old house which turned out to be Sunila Pradhan's house mm. and we started rehearsing there. But she was in the process of shifting to this spanking new bungalow in JVPD. Okay. 
so we must have rehearsed for about a week at Sunila's house in Andheri, mm. and then we shifted to her beautiful new bungalow in JVPD. So I would say three quarters of the rehearsals took place at her house in uh, JVPD, and just began mm. there. Mm. And those days JVPD was quite, you know, I mean, there was civilization up to Cooper Hospital. Mm. After that, there was the Air India mm. buildings, and then. It was almost like wilderness, you know. So I used to get off at Cooper Hospital and then walk down mm. to rehearsal when Puri Sahib didn't pick me up or, you know, mm. either way. So mm. most of the rehearsals took place there. And Dubai had just taken over her house. Uh, it was a bungalow with her parents living on the ground floor and then they would they occupied the first floor mm. and it was large rooms. So mm. we used to just arrive there and then just take over. You know, nobody in the house was allowed to speak loudly. She had dogs who used to bark incessantly. One of them was a Pomeranian. And it used to drive Dubey crazy, so the dogs had to be shut up. It was almost as though that house existed for <laughs> Dubey and not for the owners, you know. Mm. But that's where we rehearsed. In fact, that was a very important rehearsal and party space for, I would say, a good five or six years. So afterwards. right up to 79. Yeah, right? yeah. It was, you know, we did a lot. We, the entire another play that we did was rehearsed there. So, yeah, it was, Sunila's house had become the kind of centre, because they were very, very welcoming and very generous with their space, both Dr. Pradhan and Sunila. And this was uh, the time that uh, Valchand had wound up, right? Yeah, well, you know, see, I, I, you can imagine that I just came in from the outside. Mm -hmm. I had no clue what the theatre scene was like. How well did you know the city physically? I knew, I was just discovering the city, okay, mm -hmm. because... I started working with Dubey and then college started. Mm. Okay, so with, with I was at Elphinstone College, so I used mm. to have to commute. Mm. And with college, then I started discovering the city. You know, I used to travel around. Mm. And I also did I also did jobs, you know, odd jobs, mm. etc. That allowed me to actually move around a bit. Mm. And uh, so I really I didn't have a sense of the theatre scene at all in Bombay when or I came. Or the art scenario. Nothing, nothing. Whatever came to me came in those first three or four years a lot through Dubey. So, mm. it, 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 in the sense that he became a filter in a sense. Mm. So, I think I got to know the beautiful people of Juhu, mm. Pratima Bedi, Kunki Anand, Parveen Babi. I mean, I saw that entire, you know, the, those relationships unraveling and coming together <laughs> and the whole LSD trips and, you know, all that. So, that's what I'm saying. My mm. view of the mm. cultural life of the city was completely at that point of time through Dubey and Dubey always needed a companion to be with him. He always, you know, he tried to tell the very end, he always, so for the first five or six years I was his like companion. So we would, we, I would go everywhere with him, I'd be with him all the time. I remember my mother one day told Dubey that, okay Dubey, we have donated a son to you, you look after him. So I used to hardly be home, you know, so uh, yeah. It was only after we started working at Chavildas that mm. I started getting a sense of the larger theatre scene. Mm. Because, you know, suddenly you were not working in isolation. Mm. Mm. Dubey, of course, knew people, he had his contacts. But that phase was when things had kind of, you know, broken down a lot for him. He mm. was really trying very hard to rebuild theatre unit. Because mm. the old theatre unit had completely got fragmented, people had gone away, you know, mm. and stuff like that had happened. So, he was... Who were the people who had gone away? Oh, well, you know, we used to hear all the other names. Like, for instance, uh, take the earlier thing. Now, people like Amol worked mm. with him up to Hevadan. In fact, Amol was associate director of Hevadan. And after a point, Dubey let go of Hevadan and Amol used to run it. Because it's interesting because I saw Hevadan, that was my first real experience of Dubey's work. And a few years later, I started doing the sound for Hevadan. Mm. So then I started traveling with the troupe, mm. Mm. you know, playing the tape record of music mm. cues and stuff like that. Mm. So people like Amol had moved away. Amol had formed mm. his own group. You know, Chitra, Amol and mm. Chitra had moved. So, a lot of the people who were earlier very close to him had kind of either gone on to work, start working independently or had fallen by the wayside or whatever, you know. And Dubey used to quarrel with people all the time. So, you know, one day they were his friends, the next day they were, you know, out of his good books. So, it was like that. Mm. Uh, yeah, and I, it's interesting that he may have been meeting, you know, his old Marathi theatre colleagues, etc. But I didn't really encounter them at that time. And was this sort of breakdown of theatre unit uh, coinciding in some way with the shift and the breakdown away from Valchand? I think so because, you know, it's interesting. I got to know about Valchand not through Dubey directly but through other people. Like Sunila would tell me about it and stuff like that, you know. Mm. The thing about him was he never... He had this big thing about not looking backwards at what was. 
you know mm. the glory days etc because frankly and i used to feel that a bit that i wish i had started working with dubey 5 years earlier you know if it had been possible because you always feel that he had crossed his real peak by then mm. okay because you heard such amazing stories about him and every generation feels that i mean you yeah. know every generation feels that if i had worked if i'd been alive 10 years earlier I mean, there's a wonderful woody allen film about yes. this you know it's yeah, but it's exactly the same thing that you always feel that you've missed the moment which is the ridiculous age. yeah the golden age but there's no such thing as a golden age right mm. but he would not really talk about valchand he would mention it in passing but never really talk about it never say that you know if he had valchand phir ye kar sakte the wo kar sakte the not at all was there any bitterness there must have been some bitterness i'm sure there was i'm sure there was because you know he had from what i gathered he had run out that place i mean he was like a little zamindar out there run out the place and mm. then they had to take it away and there was some i don't think the circumstances of the taking away were particularly pleasant i think within the valchan family there was some division of mm. you know of mm. assets or whatever you want to call it mm. and the person who got it wanted to do something else out there fair enough you know mm. he didn't want it to be used for a thing mm. I, i think later on there was a recording studio that came up there at mm. valchan terrace mm. and it was ran successfully for many years so as a result he lost out mm. but as i said he never thought lot talked about it at all he didn't talk about bhula bhai institute either not at all not at all not at all not at all you know that's what i'm saying he mm. never looked back mm. in a way i guess it was you know i wish he had because you know not mm. from a nostalgia point of view but at least from mm. a kind of you know historical point of view if he talked about mm. it mm. there may have been conversations like for instance he talked he until the very end he would always talk about pd shanoi this one person yes. who worked very mm. who he was very responsible he for his by influence him. by him but that was at bula bai memorial mm. but that was an individual that was not the space that he mm. talked about you know mm. Yeah. So, uh, I uh, but I knew that he'd lost, and he was actually in the process of rebuilding at hmm, that time. Hmm. Who were the others uh, who felt similarly bereft of a space when Valchand closed down? Well, from what mm-hmm. I gather, the others were you know people from Avishkar. You know, mm-hmm. But as I said, at that point of time, I had no you contact didn't. with them. I had no contact. I got to know mm-hmm. about this later when when I started myself trying to figure out what was going on at that time, mm-hmm. etc. So in that transition time, mm. Dubey was using the time to actually create new venues for himself for his theatre. Mm. Okay, mm. so Tejpal he would be performing. In he fact, was trying out venues, or did he want to create one space? No, he was he was he was performing where he could. So we 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 performed in fairly big spaces. For instance, Tejpal for us was a big space. There were six hundred seats, mm. and we used to have barely twenty five thirty people in the audience. So it was you know it was a big space. but he had got it reasonably cheap he was he was he, he was he was very friendly with the manager at tejpal mm. at that time the technical person at tejpal was dharamsi merchant mm. who was who became a very close colleague of uh, dubey's for some years in fact dubey got him to be the first manager of prithvi really yeah it was a very kind of a beckett situation because you know dubey placed him at prithvi and then dharamsi over time became loyal fair enough mm. to prithvi management so when dubey had a scrap Mm. Then Dharamsi chose to be on the side of Prithvi, so it was a typical Beckett situation, <laughs> you know. So Dharamsi was there, and uh, then I remember doing performances at Ravindra Nathya Mandir, again a big hall. One night we performed at Bhai Das, one very very rainy night when there was the city was flooded and about six people showed up in Bhai Das. Can you imagine? What did you perform there? Garbo, because that was the play that was being performed at that time. So six people showed up in Bhai Das, and. fortunately for us one of the people in the audience was the actor premnath and he sent a check for 10000 the next day saying that this is to cover your losses <laughs> so you know it was quite crazy it was it was in that kind of thing so when chabildas came it was a huge change mm. <coughs> so basically avishkar uh, and their team were the ones who were responsible for yeah. doing the basic sourcing and yeah they finding actually out about yeah the yeah i mean that that's fairly well documented that yeah. they were looking for a space someone suggested they go and see the space and they saw it and they said you know fine we'd work there mm-hmm. i think what was significant was that avishkar got the space but what was significant was the decision within avishkar to actually open it out to other people yes. you know i think that was the key thing do you think that was uh, that was an essential thing to do or was that a kind of unusual generosity but well, it's certainly very generous of them i mean i i, I don't know 
how you know right now it's anecdotal mm. it'd be very interesting to know exactly what, what their reasons driven were. that yeah yeah but whatever it was it was a very very important decision um, they needn't have shared it but perhaps they felt at that point they didn't have the confidence to use the space entirely on their own mm. i mean over the years avishkar has grown and you know they have they have the space in matunga mm. which for instance now they are not so open to sharing yes you see so avishkar today is at a different mm. position mm. okay at that time it wasn't so it's possible also i guess in the 70s things were a little more you know little more open in that sense you know i don't mm. know i don't know but they took that decision and it wasn't as though that place was being used by other theater groups every day mm. i mean mm. you they would barely have 10 or 12 days in a month mm. for other theater groups mm. Mm. but that was more than adequate at that mm. point of time see so i want to go back to the transitional years yeah. with dubey how could you say that that reflected in his work or in his strategies of you know or in his economics how did that uh, that transitional period What First of all we did very few performances relatively mm. okay we didn't perform as much as we that as much as we did mm. once chabilas opened mm. uh, i distinctly remember a huge spurt in performances once chabilas opened mm. uh, because what happened was chabilas opened prithvi opened and tata opened okay mm. uh, chabilas for a few years and then prithvi and then tata mm. and then suddenly we were performing in three spaces simultaneously Mm-hmm. Okay, and that was huge. The number of performances we started doing were enormous. So mm-hmm. in that transition period, performances were very few. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he managed for money in those days. You know, I really don't know how he managed for money. Um, he always had a, some money coming in from Bilaspur, but he had a big support network. A lot of people supported him. So I guess some of them may even have. So a kind of informal generosity. Completely informal. Yeah, yeah, completely. Like for instance, uh, Vinod Doshi. You know. who had given him mm-hmm. balchand mm-hmm. there is in the first place he remained a very close friend and supporter so all post theater part show parties many of them would happen at vinod's place at this time from about 73 to about 79 or 80 um were you aware of the world of commercial theater around you or were you only meeting and interacting with people who were doing your kind of theater and yeah. other languages Yeah well actually it's because of Chavaldas that then I started slowly getting aware of what other people were doing uh, a lot of dubey's actors i would say 90% of them were maharashtrians because he had close connections with the marathi theater scene uh, that was his area of movement mm. a lot of maharashtrian actors wanted to work with him mm. so they would so i in fact i learned marathi to speak marathi fluently because of that because generally the maharashtrian actors would not hmm. attempt to learn english and hindi was what the play was being so we they would always speak in marathi to each other and dubey used to speak to them in marathi so i picked up marathi as a, in the process so once we went to chabildas i started seeing other that's the first time i saw a whole lot of other theater I used to go and see a few commercial Marathi plays, uh, like uh, the one that, for instance, I remember. Very, I see some of the Natya Sangeet plays mm-hmm. in those days. I used to quite enjoy the music. Those were still happening. Yeah, they were still happening. Not that often, but they used to mm-hmm. happen. And what were the venues? For uh, the, the, the regular Shivaji Mandir, etc. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to also like Bhakti Barve very much. So I used to try and watch her shows. And the one that struck me very much was the Pygmalion. They had done a wonderful adaptation of Pygmalion. She was just brilliant in that. So. so But it's interesting that at that time a fair amount of Marathi commercial plays were solid plays. I mean, you could see a Pygmalion; it was a big hit, you know. Mm-hmm. So there was, there, I think, somebody else has also mentioned it that at that period, the commercial theatre had a certain solidity. Mm-hmm. There was a certain uh, uh, emphasis on literature. There was a certain emphasis on, you know, a, a certain sophistication in terms of content, mm-hmm. at least. Uh, there was the usual stuff also, but. several of the very very popular plays were very solid plays hmm. and um, the experimental theater to a large extent also fed that you know um, it, it was not unusual to see good work being done on the experimental stage and either the actors or the writer or the director then moving into the commercial theater for instance a little later for instance chandu kulkarni and uh, 
his his crew from Aurangabad when they came to Bombay, they started doing work here. Mm. They took a fair amount of experimental theatre style into the commercial. Uh, I think they did a Teen Chaugi, for instance. There was this mm. play, which was monologues. Three women mm. giving monologues. Mm. became very popular in the commercial theatre, but that was essentially came out of the experimental theatre. Okay. Dr. Lagu, of course, came from the commercial mm. into experimental and then back, went back into the commercial. Mm. 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 Arvind Deshpande, Sulabha, all of them created the kind of... Uh, uh, their foundations here, but moved on. So, the commercial theatre was very aware of what was going on. So, there wasn't the this space. sharp division that we see? Not at all. Or not that we at saw all. later? It, actually, for an actor, it was very interesting. You did a lot of intercollegiate plays. Mm. Then you came into the so-called Chabildas or Prayogic movement, where mm. you honed your skills, spent mm. two, three years becoming solid. And then you went into commercial theatre. So, by the time you went into commercial theatre, you were fairly solid. You know, mm. now it's different. You do intercollegiate plays and then there's no priogic in between. So you mm. jump straight either into television or into commercial theatre. You're talking the about Marathi theatre. Marathi, I'm talking about Marathi theatre specifically. Mm. Yeah, I think Marathi theatre has some kind of a, you know, structure. Mm. In Hindi theatre there's mm. no such thing. Mm. So that was, that was an interesting. Similarly, you know, you wrote an interesting play, you honed your skills in the priogic kind of thing and then you moved into commercial. Mm. I'm not saying everybody did that, but you had these three stages. So, by the time you went into the commercial theatre, you had already spent a fair number of years working in the non-commercial mm -hmm. arena. So, you know, that, that I think gave the writers something, you know, or the mm -hmm. actors or everybody that got mm -hmm. involved, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, how, would, how would time schedules managed, rehearsal times, rehearsal spaces, if there are a body of actors, as you said, 90% of them from Marathi yeah. theatre of various yeah. kinds, how was all this, say somebody like Sulubha Deshpande, she was active in the Chabila's yeah. plays as well, sure. which was there and doing commercial stuff also. So how, how well, did it work out? What were the tensions? Tensions were like this, uh, much, much gentler times. Uh, most, I was a student for the longest time, but most of the people I worked with had jobs. Uh, most of them were middle class people, middle and low middle class mm. people. So they had similar kind of clerical jobs. Mm. Banks were big employers of theatre people. Mm. Banks had quotas for theatre people. Like they had really? for sports people. Yeah, yeah. Amol, Dilip Kulkarni, all of them worked in banks. And they were not, ex Mohan Bandari. I've gone and met the, all of them in the offices. They had to just sign the muster once a year, take part in the interbank theatre competitions. Mm. Okay, like sports people. They'll go sign the mm. musters, take part in the interbank uh, cricket or whatever mm -hmm. sports tournaments mm -hmm. rest of the year they could do pursue their theatre work and this was part of the especially the public sector banks it was part of their policy to actually support mm -hmm. the arts and support sports so it's very theatre friendly very much mm -hmm. and so at 5.36 you switched off and you left so you commuted to your rehearsal mm -hmm. so we started rehearsal around 6.37 we'd mm -hmm. start mm -hmm. and then a few years later when I started directing we had a rehearsal space only about 8.30, quarter to 9. So, we had a very short two-hour rehearsal. Mm. So, mm. we ended up rehearsing for more days. Mm. Uh, but it was much simpler. I mean, people would come on time. It was not a problem. People would catch a train. And, you know, the network of trains has always been pretty good in Bombay. And you'd make it to your rehearsal. And you rehearsed and you went home. So, you went home a bit late. You reached home at 9.30, 10. But that was part of life. Yeah. Mm. The most important thing was that because we all had jobs, we didn't depend on the theatre for an income. So that financial load was not there on theatre. But somebody like a Dubey was doing theatre full time. Yeah, but Dubey was a, it's a bit different in the sense that he, mm. he had an independent So he would income. be... Um, he was a, he was the an exception. exception. Absolutely. Others. Absolutely. Everybody else had jobs. Everybody else had jobs. Some people by then, a little later, started doing film, etc. But otherwise, mm. all of us were employed. So this concept of a freelance actor? No, 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 not at all, not at all. You were not professional, if you were professional, means there was, what is it? You only had cinema to support, you are the commercial theatre. And commercial theatre even then did not pay at all. I mean, you got paid, but very few people could live off commercial theatre. Can few you people. recall any names who you think did you live did. off? I think some of the big guys at that time may have, you know. But they also did cinema, see, there was cinema. Mm. TV kind of democratized it a lot because it generated a lot more employment. So younger and younger people then could become full-time actors mm. because they could earn from television. That would have happened in the when did mid TV, 80s, yeah, after, 90s. Yeah, I think after 85 no? because mm. when TV opened out to yeah. private producers mm. was after 85. 
and what is interesting is i think this is another thing that you had sort of we were talking about we were much more banded into groups oh. like there was no question of me working with any other group if i was with dubai i was with dubai so your identity was with the group completely completely unlike today unlike today so every group had a kind of a core you know every theater company had a core group of maybe mm. Five, eight, ten, twelve, depending on your thing, mm-hmm. and they just were completely with that one group, complete sense of ownership. And that basic identity was drawn from the director. Right? Yeah, yeah. Well, say a group like Antar Natya, not necessarily one person, maybe two, three people. There was a younger mm-hmm. group, mm-hmm. but in a group like Dubey's, definitely. I mean, he and he was extremely possessive. There was no way you could work with somebody else. Very difficult. Without him saying yes, no chance. No chance. Did the opportunity ever come up? Ah, I was a happy, happy. It was over, you know, over the years with him. Many people used to ask me. Some of his own contemporaries used to try and move me away from him. <laughs> I was offered, you know, work in Calcutta, various places. But they saw that, you know, I was working a lot, very closely with Dubey and taking on a lot of the responsibilities, etc. So people would ask, and I. There was no way I could do that. Where in Calcutta? Padatik was very keen. Shyamanand was very keen that I come and work with him and stuff like that. But you know, I realized very quickly that these were games between two, you know, rajas, and I'll get kind of screwed in the process. So I just kept away from all. But you know, it meant that you cast from a very limited pool. In the sense that every play had to be cast more or less within the same group of actors. Hardly you'd get somebody coming in because the rules rules suited that person. uh but it also meant that you developed a style which was very distinctive everybody worked on together for 3 years 4 years 5 years at a time so you know it was much so easier would you say that was a good thing or in some ways i think the repertory system was very nice in the sense that you know here today it's quite tough to because we bring in a motley branch of actors and come with different styles different experience different background and the first couple of weeks of rehearsal is just spent trying to pull it all together into some kind of homogeneous style you know mm. uh, so a lot of it. and then as a director also you end up having to constantly explain things if you've been working mm. together over a period of time then you There's know there is an understanding there is an understanding i mean the way which is very hard to understand the way the best of times we spoke in a very kind of you know broken sentences and stuff like that so you have to understand without him really explaining mm. so mm. you know so it it helped that way it helped a lot yeah mm. um, talking about the chavilda period 74 to 92 Would you say that there were phases in this, in the way that theatre? Yeah, for sure. It began slowly. It began slowly. Mm. There was a lot of excitement, but it began slowly, and then I think after the first couple of years, uh, a lot it started generating a lot of activity around it. Mm. Uh, a lot of theatre groups came into being because of the existence of Chavilas. Like was, which ones? Would a you lot say? of the younger groups you take, whether it is the Shafat and his people, uh, Rajiv Naik and his group. a oh, whole lot of people i mean mm-hmm. if you uh, it's interestingly mm-hmm. kakade kaka is the documentation yeah. so all this information is available a lot of activity started happening i think because it was possible then to actually perform it you know at chavilas uh it also attracted other languages um for instance gujarati um, malayalam i don't know about gujarati but definitely malayalam there was a bit of there was hindi i mean ketan mehta nasir om puri all of them started working at uh, hmm. chabandas hmm. not very often but they were very much there i don't know ipta ever came to chabandas hmm. i just have no memory of ipta performing at chabandas they may have done the odd show but they never identified with the typical ipta they didn't identify hmm. with what was going on there hmm. it was primarily a marathi theater movement hmm. but people like dubey identified very closely with the marathi theater movement. he was seen as part of that movement even though he worked in, in, in hindi the, mostly but he was seen very much as part of the movement hmm. uh, i think people like nasir and all came there because of the excitement of chabaldas and also that they had access to it, it was possible for them to perform hmm. you know and hmm. also to dip into that excitement and that audience pool also uh, was the chabaldas audience um, you know sir sort of, did they also grow with the movement i think did so they? i think so because you used to have a lot of you, a lot of people would come again and again it had become like a habit you know you come to chaburdas to see a play primarily marathi primarily uh, marathi primarily marathi mostly maharashtrian audience hmm. 
mostly. They would come to see Hindi plays as well? Yeah, yeah, of course. Very much. Very much. Uh, and not necessarily from Dadar. People would come from as far away as Thane and stuff like that. Because Dadar station is a very central station. Yes. Right? You can connect to both the eastern and the western suburbs mm. not from Dadar mm. station. So we'd have people coming from all over the city, in fact. How were these language divides, uh, you know, how did they resolve themselves in this way? Actually? It was not a major issue at all. I think it was more a cultural thing, uh, Devina, rather than a language thing. Mm. I mean, culturally, Dubey was identified very closely with the Marathi theatre scene. Mm. He was seen culturally as part of the theatre scene. Even though we did plays, of, uh, we didn't do Marathi plays, mm. we did, you know, Several of his were original Marathi plays, like I mean, Garbo was or Baby was. But he also did people like Shankar Shesh, he also did Bengali, original Bengali plays. The language used was Hindi. And at that time, Hindi was also the link language, you know, which mm. has, that place has been taken by English today, perhaps. Mm. But Hindi was the language which Maharashtrians, non Maharashtrians, you know, Gujarati people, everybody came and watched a Hindi play because it was a kind of a common language, it was a link language. Mm. So, I don't think it was so much a language divide as much as a cultural divide. Mm -hmm. You know, if there was one, it was a cultural divide. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you recall seeing any great productions, great performances at Chabil Das? Oh yeah. Oh, Would yeah. you like it? Oh, a lot, man, a lot. I mean, I <coughs> I remember being very struck by Amul's Julus. I remember being very struck by Dr. Lagu's Antigone. Uh, some of um, Jaydev's early work was very interesting out there. Uh, what else? That uh, Theatre Academy, uh, a little later, became mm. very, very popular. I don't think they ever brought Ghashiram Kotwal to Chabal. That's mm. too small mm. for them. Mm. But they brought their other plays there. I remember seeing Mahapur out there. Uh, so they used to bring their work from uh, Pune. Mm. That was, yeah, it was quite a thing when Theatre Academy came. Because hmm. it was not so common. Some of Dubey's own productions were very, very tell, good. Tell, tell uh, well, I think his production of Tendulkar's Baby was very good. His production of um, uh, uh, Achut was his Sofa Kam Bed, which became a big issue. issue. Mm. Actually, it was a very, very sophisticated production. What What do you think was so I mean, you know, for instance, both in Baby and Sofa Kam Bed, Dubey was one of the early pioneers in the use of video well, not video film, because we didn't have video in those days. So actually, we used to run a film projector, a uh, multimedia kind of thing, you know, which of course in his later years, he completely dismissed as, you know, rubbish. Yeah. But he, he, he tried all this stuff. And for audiences at that time, it was quite an unusual thing, you know. In Baby, we used to run a 16mm film as part of the play. We shot the film on 16mm, silent. Yeah. We shot the film on 16mm, borrowed, you know, raw stock from various people. Govind Nilani shot it. Mm. And uh, then we used to have a projector at the back and mm. the music. So I used to operate the projector and the music and Harish Patel used to do the lights. And we couldn't see each other, and but our cues were in common. Mm. So I used to look at the roof and I could tell from the bounce of the light on the roof that he is now fading. Mm. So that was my cue to start the projector. You know, so things like this. Considering that it was such a primitive space, some very interesting experiments were done, you know. It, it didn't seem to that way hamper people. Mm. It was very primitive. I mean, the technology there was, it, from today's point of view, extremely primitive. But people did all sorts of things there. So was there a curiosity and a willingness to, you know, to know what others were doing, other arts engagements, other art yeah, forms? Yeah. Well, you know, by 73, 74 onwards, actually politically the city was quite alive. You know, the, the, the big railway strike, for instance. George Fernandez. Yeah, took place in what, 74? 74, 75. Yeah, 74, 75. Yeah. And it impacted everybody because it was a big, big strike. It was huge and, and very, very significant at that time. And then the textile workers were also very, very yes, edgy. Yes, and, yeah. you know, things were happening there. And over time, over a few years later, the textile strike took place. Um, that would have coincided with the emergency. Yeah, perhaps, perhaps. Mm. And the emergency was also on at that time, you know, 74. Street theatre had started happening, you know. There was street theatre. I mean, for instance, I was I was at uh, Elphinstone at that time. And mm. Elphinstone College was quite the hotbed of anti-emergency activity. In a, in a small way, but mm. whatever there was in the student circles mm. in South Bombay was all happening out of Elphinstone College. So there was some street, the groups had started forming, some street theatre had started happening. Uh, I, I don't think... For instance, directly in our theatre, 
you know you saw a direct reflection of that i don't think so a few years later dube did a play uh, called watis love which he mm. did in hindi called abe beukuf mm. and uh, in that play you had it was a very very political play so you talked about you know democracy is raped on stage and there's a very beautiful mm. young girl who's raped by the military dictator and mm. there is a kind of a slave character who's washed ashore in this strange land so he pretends to be a, because nobody knows him he pretends to be a king mm. from a former thing you know all, so there was a lot of political stuff like that but i don't think anybody did anything directly that i remember that it is none of none of the people mm. i was which directly addressed the questions of say emergency or what was going on mm. um, I do know that in the in the workers theatre scene stuff was going on mm. but we were quite we were very very much more a bourgeois theatre very much more very clearly a bourgeois theatre you know and whatever the struggles were were well within the bourgeois world did marathi commercial theatre have closer ties with uh, say working class theatre or those audiences i i don't know i doubt it i don't see kamgar rangbhoomi in 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 bombay has been fairly a separate entity mm. you know mm. even even to this day whatever little that still mm. happens it doesn't seem to cross over too much i can only think of two plays in the rec- that i remember that brought in kind of you know that i saw that you know some kind of dalit for instance uh, sensibilities mm. uh, i forget the name of the play but sambhaji bhagat uh, did this play he did it in the kind of you know in the traditional tamasha style uh and that was a political play but they didn't do many shows which is a big big sort of uh, it was sad because it was really a very what very i forget what it was called it was called something sub part uh and what year after this a bit later than all the period we are talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. and then more recently he's done the shivaji, shivaji. underground now again now this is again a, it's very unusual because it brings a completely different sensibility mm-hmm. i mean you know both of us saw it at mm-hmm. the ncpa yes. it was so ironic seeing it yes. out there you know <laughs> but it's so interesting that yeah. that 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 kind of so there was not much of that kind of crossover not much of that no no mm-hmm. i mean on one hand you had people like namdev dasar you know who were mm-hmm. the, the dalit panther movement yes. was emerging mm-hmm. uh, but i don't didn't see much of it in theater there was poetry there was a lot of poetry there was a lot of street theater but as was that way we seemed to be fairly insular in that sense you know mm-hmm. yeah yeah did you ever encounter the state in in its many forms of manifest theater competitions awards yeah well anything, i personally did not because un- well fortunately unfortunately i started working with dubey before i became a college student so i personally missed out entirely on the intercollegiate circuit though i would have worked in hindi which is where the state the yeah in hindi it was all like ipta ran a competition etc etc but the marathi uh, state competitions were very big in those days very big they still continue but they are just a pale shadow what they used to be that used to be the showcase of the year you know groups from hundreds of groups would participate it was huge and we'd all go and see the finals or the you know the elimination rounds in bombay you know and i had i had a cousin for instance in aurangabad who was very into theater mm-hmm. so he would bring his place to bombay and it would be a big thing we'd go and see it you know it was all part of that and the quality Oh, ah, quite interesting. Yeah, some of the 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 good plays were really and I mean, scripts etc. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. I mean, if you were a winner of the Marathi state competition, then you were picked up and you went into commercial theater and all that kind of thing. It was quite it was quite a uh, quite an important thing that and it was incredible organization, you know. So many plays from so many different centers. So you had a you know, you had your regional eliminations. Mm. and then the best so many plays were brought to bombay which was a big thing mm. and then there would be this grand final competition and then you and this worked through the uh, once every year so you know, and the state sponsored yeah completely completely sponsored by the state mm. it was a big thing so sitting at ravindranath mandir you could see plays from jalna kolhapur aurangabad pune all parts of the, assume, uh, assuming of course that they made it to that level mm. and that was a huge thing again yet another example of a time when it seemed important to the state mm. to actually support this kind of thing mm. compared to that today there is virtually no support virtually no support mm-hmm. especially in the state of maharashtra which sort of you know prides itself on its theater actually officially there's just nothing is done nothing mm. is done i mean in all these years the, uh, the, the experiment of theater hasn't been able to find one space for itself mm. you know after chabil das there's been nothing mm. 
you know, uh, I mean, since we are talking about yeah. spaces, yeah. there's been nothing. Avishka runs a little space there. We tried a little space at Sarte College, but nothing of the kind that Chhabal Das was. Now, isn't that pathetic? Have attempts been made to? Yeah, people have tried. I, I, you know, I, 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 I will not blame the state entirely. I think the theatre community in Maharashtra has failed itself. You know, I, I think. I think, for instance, the commercial, the big commercial producers have no interest except their own. Uh, and even though the experimental movement had such major personalities, hugely respected personalities, somehow they just couldn't get their act together and wrangle the space. It's amazing that people like Tendulkar were there, Damu Kinkri, and you know, Arvind Deshman, all these big, big guys mm. just were not able to do it. I don't know, it, it's mystifying. It's mystifying. Could it be because their plays were critiquing? I don't think so, you know. I don't think so. I don't. You know, see, let me tell you, it's very clear that most of the Marathi experimental theatre movement is a very bourgeois theatre. Mm. Okay, it was not in that sense seen as a threat. At the most, you know, the morality code was being yes. challenged and those kind of things, but mm. there was no serious political kind of opposition. Mm. And anyway, at that time, you must remember that even Maharashtra was much more progressive in its politics, even at a political level. Mm. What you're seeing today, the completely reactionary politics was, was very different at that time. You know, mm. until recently, I mean, even today, a lot of politicians like to be associated with the cultural world because there is there is some rub off scene. They mm. don't know much about it, about it now, but it's there. Earlier, it was even more so. So in that sense, there was, there was that kind of, uh, it wasn't so... Mm. Difficult. Could you recall any politicians or any bureaucrats who were particularly not in our theatre, not in our theatre. But again, you know, I you know during the Chhabudas phase, you must have been there. I was much mm. much younger. I was not, I was not in any position where I was actually creating something on my own. I was part of, you know, a much larger thing, really, mm. as an actor or whatever, you know. Mm. So I didn't get to see that side of it. I think mm. I was too young for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, coming back to whether there were groups from outside, was the theatre community interested in what was yeah. happening in theatre outside of Bombay? And well, within Bombay itself, see, theatre uh, and our experimental theatre was seen as a very important part of a much larger progressive movement which embraced, you know, writing, dance, mm. cinema especially. Because at that mm. time, the new wave cinema yes. had sort of picked up. And we used to have a lot of uh, filmmakers, political activists, etc. coming and seeing our theatre. Mm. Um, theatre had a certain cultural status. You know, it was seen, it was not, it was not seen as entertainment purely. It was seen as being very much part of this whole cultural movement. Mm. And that reflected in the way we were all regarded. Mm. You know, I, I, I think people thought much more seriously about the theatre then, then it, it is, though there are more people watching theatre today. Yes. Okay. But now we are more, we have seen as yet another product of entertainment. Mm. A lot of theatre is entertainment, mm. which is alright. I, mm. I have no problems with that. But that was a big significant difference. I remember when we were doing sex morality and censorship for the first time in Pune, a lot of the young theatre people of Pune came and said, you know, one thing that we have understood from this play is that everybody took theatre so seriously. People used to get so worked out about a play. People thought so much about a play and we don't do it anymore. Today it's unimaginable. It's not, yeah, exactly. So that's, I think, a very mm. big difference. Mm. We did a play called Achha Ek Bar Aur, which was actually a Bengali play called Rakt Beej, I think, originally in Bengali. Mohit Chattopadhyay mm. is a writer. Mm. And it was a typical Bengali political play of that kind. You know, four characters. One is a tyrant. The tyrant has a chamcha who's a weakling. And then there is a young rebel boy and the young rebel girl, okay? <laughs> and they kind of, you know, clash through this play. And we had symbols and stuff. And it was all very, very kind of, you know, that kind of thing. It's called Achha Ikbar or Dubai had called it. But at that time it was seen as, a, as an important political play. So, for instance, the Committee for the Protection of Democratic Rights, which was a civil liberties organization that had just formed post-emergency, would book 40 tickets, 50 tickets for their members. And they'd come and see the play together. Mm. And then after the play there'd be a discussion. Now, that kind of connect was there, you know, mm -hmm. that kind of connect. You did a show, the next day you were also at Dalit Panther rally, okay, because you mm -hmm. wanted to see. And so I used to see Namdev Dasar both as a performer and as a political activist because he was mm -hmm. very dramatic. Yes. You know, so this kind of thing, a lot of this kind of thing was happening. And the media was also active. Media, yes. 
uh, writing, reporting on? No, actually, no? interestingly enough, it varied. You know, sometimes we had good reviewers, we had sometimes we had poor reviewers. I remember there was a guy called Iglesia or something, something Iglesia. He used to ask us to write his reviews for him and give it to him. <laughs> so whatever we sent him as a handout, na, it would be printed as a review. What paper? Times of India. What? Yeah. <laughs> but the Hindi edition of the Times of India, meaning the Hindi um. version. So probably Nabharat Times or one thing, because it was in Hindi. So we had uh, the, uh, the, the key, the, the reviews that we used to look forward to was Vidyadhar Date's reviews. Hmm. Because Vidyadhar had a political position and his reviews were always, they were not wishy-washy. It was very clear where he was coming from. And he was as quiet as he is even today. <laughs> yeah, but he's amazing. I mean, he hasn't changed. He looks the same as he looked in the 70s. He hasn't <laughs> aged a bit. Okay, in fact, he smiles much more now. He was a bit stern in those days. So you had, but he used to do it in the evening paper of the Times of India. I it was see. called the Evening News. And I may still have some copies of his reviews. In fact, what is now known as Magic Pill, Sambhoksa Sanyastak, he, he wrote a Marxist review of Sambhoksa Sanyastak. <laughs> he saw the whole play in Marxist terms. Very interesting. So you had a few people like that. But uh, What about in the Marathi press? Marathi has always written a lot. Marathi has always written. Even today they give a lot of column space to reviews. Hmm. But they are mostly descriptive reviews. You know, they are mostly descriptive. And that, that has remained more or less unchanged. That, is, that seems to be more or less unchanged. All this theatre um, taking place, Sunil, um, in various languages, adaptations, translations, suggests that there was a lot of translation and adaptation writing happening. Yeah. yeah. How can you give me a some? A fair amount. I think, I think for instance, uh, a lot of that, I mean, as Shanta has written in her book, hmm. I, at least during the Chabullah's period, uh, there were a lot of language adaptations, you know, uh, translations mm. and some adaptations being performed there. Mm. And um, I think for the first time there was a recognition of a pan-Indian theatre scene. You know, mm. there was a, I think mm. first of all the theatre community has to realise for itself that, mm. oh, okay, you know, there's a guy writing in Delhi, there's a guy writing in Manipur, we're all writing for the theatre, mm. so we need to exchange. Mm. Mm. Uh, stuff and I, Dubey had a big hand, big role to play in that because he really encouraged that a lot. There used to be a lot of script readings. I've, I've heard so many first time plays being read out and everybody had their own distinct Where would those style. Take place? Uh, like for instance, Sunila's plays, I've heard Tendulkar read out his play Baby for the, f he had freshly written, mm. he read it in the, only in his inimitable style, you know, very soft, very low, but he used to be a wonderful reader. Yes. I've read Mahesh. And you know, some of these things we even recorded in those days. You know, I, you know, there are tapes lying somewhere. You might actually have a recording of a Mahesh Kunchwa reading the party. For mm. I remember that distinctly that we recorded that. Uh, so there was to be a lot of readings. And a lot of people showed up for the readings. Theatre people. Mm. And there would be some discussion after that. And then it would be thrown open. Then Dubey did his own, you know, theatre workshop, writing workshops. Mm. Where again, we heard a mm. lot of plays being read. Of course, most of them were in Marathi. Mm. But working with Dubey, I had worked, I worked in a Kannada, not one, several translations from Kannada, Bengali, uh, Hindi of course, Marathi, uh, East European plays, okay. Who did those translations? Uh, East European plays used to get the English place, yeah. and uh, Dubey would, Dubey did a lot of translation, he was a brilliant translator, very, I think his translation for instance of Vakislav is a brilliant translation. He has done an excellent translation of Harold Pinter's The Caretaker. Excellent translation which we performed. And it was not an adaptation, we performed it with the, you know, just as a translation. He was very good himself and he would sit and just translate. Or he would push other people to translate, Shanta for mm. one, you know. Mm. He would push other people to translate. Um, and um, yeah, and I think that kind of had an effect on the other groups. Uh, I think it was very important because the Marathi theatre even then tended to be fairly insular. I think it kind of forced that time, mm. forced them to open out and look around. Mm. Because in a sense there is so much being written in Marathi, very few actually feel the need to look outside. Yes. You know, you know there is so much being written. But they kind of forced them to look outside and uh, what is it? Amol's production of Julius was I think a very very important production at that time for instance. You know. uh, yeah, so it, there was a lot of that happening. I don't think the same thing is happening anymore. No, mm. not, really. Mm. not really. And where the groups were coming from, 
elsewhere and performing in Bombay oh. and were they being invited? The Pune people would come. But you also must remember that the economics of theatre in those days mm. were much, much simpler. You know, we did hmm. the resources were very, very limited. Very limited. So if you had to see what plays in other cities were like, you had to travel. Yeah, you would have to And travel. did you? I mean did theatre No, groups? I didn't go just specially to see a play, you know. And there were very few festivals. festivals. Very few festivals. I mean, with Dubai, we used to travel a lot to places like Jabalpur, Bhopal. We travel uh, Calcutta. We used to travel a lot Pune. You know, because these mm -hmm. were places where he had local contacts and he was invited to perform. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did our own festival in Aurangabad. We did our own festival in Nagpur. But we were never part of. There were there was hardly. What any do you festival. mean your own festival? We did As in Dubai two yeah, plays. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, five plays, six plays. Night after night, we'd have plays. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how were these your plays received? Very well. They were, especially in the smaller centers, people used to they were packed houses and great excitement. But Dubey was a big name in the Marathi theatre scene. You know, in the, in Maharashtra, was a big name. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Madhya Pradesh, etc. Would Calcutta again, big name. People mm. would come to see his plays in Calcutta. Where Where were his plays? Where did you perform? Oh well, Gyan Manch. Uh, we've done several shows at Gyan Manch. I can't remember where we did Garbo. We may have done it in the Kala, uh, not Kala Academy, the Kala um, Mandir, because that was, I, I think, hmm. you know, we did hmm. there. We did Adha Yuga also in Kala Mandir. Uh, he did his English play, several shows at Gyan Manch. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the Hindi school, there's a, there's a small ah. theatre, about 400 seater. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this way. GD Birla, we have started performing more recently. Yes. Yeah, and those days I don't know if GD Birla even existed, but it was definitely not part of our. Yeah. The Kalamandir was the big theatre at that time. Yeah. Kalamandir was yeah. the big theatre. So, let's try and talk a little about the economics now, focusing sure. on uh, you know sure. uh, the economics and how it worked, the rehearsal space, the how many shows would constitute a break even, and what for different kinds of plays, I guess that number and that figure would be yeah different. So. If you can give me some sense of yeah. what were the principles that... Well, at Chabal Das, as I said, if you added up everything, it came to roughly 600 rupees for a yeah. performance. Yeah. Uh, you advertise, in those days, Times of India had a classified section for theatre ads. Mm. So We're talking mid-70s. Yeah. You didn't have display ads. Anyway, yeah. you couldn't afford them. Yeah. And the class, everybody looked in the classified ads for the theatre listings. Okay. So it was just basically text, mm. you know, and a title which was in bold and text. Mm. And they'd arrange it alphabetically so that mm. there was no, you know, preferential treatment being given out to. So Dubey cracked that mm. and all his plays at that time started with A. So, mm. Aur Ek Garbo, Achcha Ek Bar, Aur Apratyashit, Ah, Are Maya Visarovar. No, Anushtan was Priya, yeah. Priya, okay. Yeah. And then when others caught on, then he started making it AA. So, <laughs> ah, you know, so <laughs> this was his trick to be always on top of the listings. And it would cost very little, they had, I and mean, it was not much. But then Times of India, when they saw the popularity of the, you know, theatre listing, mm. then they started reducing the point size. And it became tinier and tinier and tinier to one point you needed a bloody magnifying glass to read the damn thing. Mm. By then, of course, the time had come where theatre had more money and <coughs> then <coughs> they virtually pushed us to display advertising. <coughs> it mm. was part also of their strategy of making the newspaper more of a product than an actually mm. newspaper kind of thing. So, <coughs> so advertising, uh, it was to be very, very basic. Nobody got paid anything. There was no question, you didn't even expect to be paid as an actor or anything, there was no question about it. When was the first time that you got paid working with Dubai? I got paid not with Dubai, Dubai I never got paid. But I got paid for the first time when I started doing Gujarati commercial theatre. When I was, was that? I used to act in the Gujarati commercial theatre as an actor. in And I used to also do technical stuff, so I used to operate sound for Gujarati commercial theatre. So my first play in Gujarati uh, as an actor, I used to get 25 rupees a show. Which year are we talking about? Uh, 76, 77 roughly around that time. Soon after I started working with Dubey, I got picked up for a Gujarati play. Mm. And uh, Dina Ben was in it and her sister was the producer. Tanmalata. You never had to do a job scene, right? I had to do, I always worked. 
as in right from the beginning no this period is when i was a student yeah okay so i didn't get, i used to get very little pocket money from home so i had to also i tended to you know like to earn my own thing right mm-hmm. from the beginning so mm-hmm. i always did stuff and then dharamsi merchant took me under his wing and started teaching me technical stuff that's how i learned lighting i learned how to operate sound mm-hmm. so i used to get 10 rupees per show to operate sound but you know if i had a pocket money of 40 rupees a month and if i got 25 rupees every weekend i was rich mm. because you know i i used to more than double my pocket money mm. every month you know mm. so monday mornings after my sunday performance of the gujarati play monday morning i was the richest kid in my group <laughs> cuz i had 25 rupees more than anybody else then when the play didn't run very well they made it 20 rupees per show mm. so you know stuff like that but in our theater there was no question of pay dubey so just make sure that everybody ate well had there was never any cribbing about the number of teas you drank or after a show he would get the local restaurant to send a bucket full of upma and we'd all you know have a, so that you know people had to travel distances to get home before they so that kind of thing but there was no what question what costs for staging yeah that's it the space staging we all carried our costumes, costumes home we usually did our own costumes it was much later that we started actually getting specialist costumes there were never there was never the question of a tempo taking your stuff to the theater nothing you carried your own stuff as late as a play called arakthakshan which is uh, the, which is uh, uh, mahesh kunja's play i used to do a job okay and the show was at 9 o'clock at prithvi i used to finish my job rush to sunila's house pick up all her cane furniture okay load it on top of a taxi go to prithvi set up the stage and the set consisted it was a home scene the furniture used to come from sunila's house okay nice cane <laughs> furniture light up perform the play after the show take everything back to sunila's house so that was the set and where were you working at that time i used to in those days i must have working work, been working at a, a feature agency called sol i used to write i started writing very early so that's what i made early years i used to make a living as a as a journalist as a writer okay feature writer yeah I did a lot of lot of feature writing and that is a full time job well it was but it was like a collective so i could take time off i never did jobs which tied me down i used to always do contractual stuff so i even worked for the tatas i worked for tata economic uh, consultancy for 3 years uh, writing economic stuff for their mm-hmm. magazine yeah called the economic scene achut was it was my editor at that time so in a sense what he, year is this right up to 83 so be- between 80 to 83 See, I did a film called Kalyug mm. in in seventy nine ish, mm. and I thought that that film would make me as an actor. You know, that'd be the break, and after that, I'd be an actor. Mm. So, of course, nothing of that sort happened. So then I went back. I had to go back into employment. So then I took up this job, mm. and uh, I worked there. It was fine. I had to write so many thousand words a week, which I would easily mm. knock off, mm. Mm. and the rest of the time was theatre. What about rehearsal space? Was there? I mean, yeah. So early the days, twelve plays were happening at Chabilas roughly in a month. Yeah. How was rehearsal space available or shared? Or We used to rehearse at Sunila's place. Then I remember rehearsing in municipal schools in halls of municipal schools, uh, which was reasonably easier in those days. Uh, then when NCPA came up, Dr. Narayan Menon, the mm. director, the first director mm. of NCPA, was very, very generous with the space. So a lot of our plays have been rehearsed at NCPA. You know, when you walk into the administrative block, mm. you know where the mm. counter mm. is and mm. thing. Mm. There is a conference room now that they have. I don't know if they ever allowed you in there. You know, there's a little foyer. Mm. There's a telephone operator. Mm. Mm. Then there's one row d- door leading into the offices. Mm. Next to that used to be a dance rehearsal room. Acha. which was given to us to rehearse so we used to rehearse a lot there hmm. uh, several plays hmm. then in the foyer outside the little theater we mm-hmm. rehearsed several plays there hmm. so ncpa used to be our center for rehearsals for many years this would be from which year to uh what? well soon after it came up so whenever ncpa yeah. opened soon after okay. that again we didn't hmm. pay anybody then we shifted to uh, chetna college because couple of our actors were students of chetna college so the principal very sweetly said mm. you can use the boys common room for rehearsal for so almost for 6 years arpana rehearsed at chetna college we used to pay 150 rupees a month mm. for that space mm. and we'd feel bad paying so little so we would say okay can we replace the fans for you can mm. we put in lights for you and the college is be very happy because they didn't have to spend money and mm. so so you know 
at that time there was no question of paying hard money for things like that you had to find ways to rehearse for free you know bell 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 minimum sets mm. there was a very little production design the way it is there today so your your theater was really a poor theater and as a result dubey's theater was marked by very very exciting scripts and very strong performances you know and mm. it's a style that we have tried to continue because and i think to a large extent that style was determined by the economics mm. you know can you describe the ending of the you know the good times at chavilas how things started to unravel and then we'll get into how you started yeah. your own well good times ended at chavilas you know from a time when everybody flocked to see it i mean you know can you imagine okay mm. suppose we had shivaji underground at bhimnagar mohalla playing at chabildas the same slightly sobo gentry types were there would have come to chabildas to see it mm. so you would have had a sham benegal you would have had a jennifer mm. who would stick out mm. in that audience but mm. they'd come to see it mm. okay so that was what it was at its peak i think i think to some extent the theater movement kind of ran a bit out of steam you know mm. i think ran out of steam we moved away because prithvi came up and though we were performing simultaneously at prithvi and at chandigarh and at tata mm. but you know prithvi had become the new exciting place what were the plays that were happening at that time at prithvi no i mean at all these three what were the kind of plays that were in you know i think by that time antarnatya had become a very important group rajiv naik's group had become mm. quite important uh uh shafad and his work had become so there were three or four important people who were still performing at chavildas but overall the overall the movement had started kind of you know the, the energy had started dissipating mm. television came in and that changed a lot mm. you know that sort of drawing side pulling people out mm. um i think it was a very gradual process it was not like overnight suddenly it went mm. off mm. and i think audiences stopped coming I think I think absurdist theater had run its course mm. you know I think people had started and all around you know you were then suddenly it had become an uncomfortable place to view or play suddenly which earlier was it not wasn't, a problem because you didn't have any other reference point I right? don't mm. know as though you were mm. otherwise in some mm. way so it had become uncomfortable you know there were no toilets there was nothing it was it was hot but more than that I think the time had also changed I think the, it coincided with the change in can be the whole political scenario mm. so how did you and dubey and others adapt to the new spaces of ncp and wow, prithvi prithvi and ncp were like luxury spaces for us yeah because suddenly you were in a well equipped theater wonderful air conditioning great green room i think we just took to it like my god this is amazing the thing about prithvi was that also it was a very exciting and very different space i remember completely being blown by it mm. you know it was so different i still remember my first rehearsal there we were to perform at night and then we were rehearsing in the day and dubey had to reblock the entire play because it was a very different space mm. and i remember you know standing and facing an actor and seeing the streets behind i said my god how weird is this wherever you turn you're seeing the audience you know yeah so i, I think we were all very very taken up by that what play was that the acha ek baro ha it, i think it was one of our first plays we performed at prithvi Yeah, so it was it was fantastic, and NCP. I mean, what? Yeah, we used to perform at Tata Theatre, my dear. We, all our early plays were at Tata Theatre with 400, 450 people in the audience, mm. and it didn't seem NCP didn't seem odd that an experimental play is being done in the Tata Theatre. It was a theatre space. Mm. That distinction was not so sharp. Mm. That you know, or the Tata may have said like today, you know, it's not like that. Did you have the concept of a weekend audience? No. No. The way we do today. No, no, not at all. We mostly did weekday shows, mostly. Mm. Yeah. Mm. The commercial theater at that time did have a weekend thing, but we didn't. We didn't at all have a weekend fixation at all. Even for the longest time, at Prithvi used to mostly do weekdays. Mm. How was publicity generated in those days? And I'm talking about you know from the yeah. time that from the beginning. Yeah. And, you know and. Were the word of mouth in a lot of word of had, mouth had the same currency? No, a lot of word of mouth, a lot of word of mouth. Uh, uh, 
some newspaper, little bit of newspaper coverage. Uh, how did people hear? It was much smaller audiences. I think people just told each other, you know. Mm. And then you did some advertising also, of course, in the newspapers. Mm. Yeah, but there was of course nothing else. There was no other way. Mm-hmm. Dubai would spend a lot of time making, inviting people. Not that he'd give them free tickets, but you know, uh, he would network a lot. He would network a lot. How was that done? He, by just going to people's places, making calls, constantly so on the marketing, move. marketing. Yeah, know. yeah. Marketing, but that sounds like, a, like yeah. but yeah, he just, yeah. he just met people all the time and, you know, invited. And he didn't, you know, that's the thing that I travel as the people who came to see Dubai's plays. I'm not talking about the general audience, mm. but he'd get a lot more film people to come and watch. Mm. He'd get a lot more, you know, non-theatre people to come and watch his shows, you know, practitioners, mm-hmm. uh, more than anybody else. Mm-hmm. He was very, very open, very confident of his work, didn't feel that, you know, oh, maybe I shouldn't, no. Nah. He would go out there and invite people and sell his work all the time. So that helped hugely. And of course, he was much written about, I mean, he used to have long articles of Dubi appearing in magazines and, you know. I guess the... Clutter was less in the media, so there was people yeah, who yeah. did. Absolutely, absolutely. There was much less happening generally. There was mm-hmm. much less happening generally. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. One channel of television, let's start there. Yeah. So, um, I, I'm going to try and end this by talking about yourself. Yeah. And uh, when did you first direct your first play? Where was it? And if you want to talk about. Yeah, I directed my first play. Uh, Technically, I directed a French play, uh, which was performed at the Alliance Francais, mm-hmm. and it was uh, with another group altogether. And it was a little thing I did on the side, almost like moonlighting. Uh, that's when I first met Akash Kurana. Mm. He was an engineer working for Telco, <laughs> and uh, at Kala Goda, in fact, his office was mm-hmm. at Telco. And he had a little desk there, and I used to go and see him there. Hall full of engineers. And I got to know Akash through Anmol Vilani's group, except that Anmol was not there in Bombay anymore, he had mm. moved. But uh, Sarita, who mm. then became his wife, was running that group, whatever it was called. They had just done the memorandum, etc. So they mm. were looking to do a new play and they were looking for somebody and so then, uh, somehow it happened and I happened to direct it. So that was my first director. I never told anybody about it. Dubai, etc. never saw it. We did two or three performances at the Alliance called The Unknown General. Mm. Um, <clears throat> then later on we decided to do the caretaker, uh, Chaukidar it was called in Hindi, the translation. When you say we, you uh, mean? Yeah, so within Theatre mm. Unit a small group of us got close to each other. So Harish Patel, Akash and I had got very close and we would spent a lot of time talking with mm. each other and we decided let's do this play and Dubey encouraged us. And the entire play was rehearsed at his flat in Bandra when he was not there. Most of the time he was not there so we mm. started to run of the place. And we never figured out who was the director. We just did it. I think all of us were confident that we'd do it. So we did the entire play on our own. And actually didn't have a director's credit at all. Mm. But it worked very well. We did many shows of that play. And... What were the spaces that you used? Tata Theatre, Prithvi Theatre. Plenty of shows at Prithvi and at Tata. Never at Chabaldas. I don't think we ever performed mm-hmm. at Chabaldas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We had a beautiful set actually. This guy Uday Zoshi had created a beautiful set. That was the first time that we actually had a set which had... and But the NCP used to allow us to store the set there. So in there go down the set used to be stored. So we had no problem. We just had was it an expensive set? It was an expensive set in those days. Must have been. I can't remember the cause. Must have been. Because he actually constructed an entire set. You know the whole play happens in the attic of mm-hmm. this old building. So he had done a very nice thing. A lot of it was kachra, but mm. all that had to be, a show after show had to mm. be recreated. Mm. So I quite enjoyed, you know, that process. Uh, and then Dubey asked me to direct his play, Ada Chopra. Mm. You know, so that was the first play that I directed formally. What year would that be? 81 maybe. And it had uh, Soni Razdan, Jayant Kriplani, Sunila Pradhan and all of those who were at that time hanging mm. around the theatre thing. So I did that. That also had a fair number of shows. That largely also helped because Dubey's own play, so he used to also push it, etc. So we did many shows of that mm-hmm. play. 
so yeah after ada chota i knew it was time to start doing my own stuff my own direction yeah yeah but then we set up arpana and when arpana was set up that time i'd got married at that time and i was i kind of felt i'd reached a kind of a you know block in theater i was not really progressing i was finding i was finding it really difficult also to get a foothold in terms of livelihood because television had just started and i started writing for television mm. so i needed more time to actually do my writing so and i started writing for sham benegal and stuff so i needed mm. that time and that was also very exciting work so for the first two or three years of arpana i was really a kind of i used to just like the shows step in for an actor so first play was directed by utkarsh second play was directed by akash and mm. then after that i started directing mm. yeah so that was the so this would be mid 80s yeah uh, 85 86 as i direct and what's it been like if you were to talk about spaces and the uh, well initially we carried on in the same tradition of you know the poor theater mm. it was possible as i told you we got a rehearsal space mm. at chetna college mm. productions were very small we started with 10000 rupees which his father gave us mm. you know so here start a theater group kind of thing mm. and uh, everything was very very tight but but you know i think we were fairly astute even at that time mm-hmm. we managed to survive without uh, resorting to any i told you we tried a couple of corporate sponsorship didn't work out and then we never actually went that route so whatever we did was entirely on the ticket basis sales. of ticket sales and call shows you know 7500 rupees someone would pay us that was entirely profit for us 7500 rupees was a lot of money in those days yeah so and then so but over time rehearsal space become a big issue and uh, arpan also started getting fragmented because uh, satellite television started and that was the end of our group things mm. became really bad so mm. then i just quit performing in regular spaces mm. and i started just doing non theater space performances very small i started doing a lot of theater and education work and stuff like that that went on for 5 years Of I was six years, then when I came back, by then the theatre scene had changed dramatically. So you came back in ninety one. Whenever I did Basuri, yeah. Huh. And by then we. Basuri was much later. Yeah, so I came back with Basuri. I didn't do anything before. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I did a lot of work, but never had. Prithvi had also kind of disappeared. They said this guy is never going to come back. Because I saw Basuri. Yeah. You saw Basuri? Yes. Oh my God. <laughs> with Yamini. Yes. Oh. That was with Akash as the father. No, Akash. Akash as the yeah, father. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Divya's play. Yeah, Divya's yeah. play. She literally twisted my arm into coming back. That was I said, okay, so let's do it, kind of thing. I, if it was not that, I wouldn't have. I, I, I might have just drifted further and further away, you know. So uh, then we had to actually look for a theatre. So we started going to SNDT. SNDT has got a huge campus. Hmm. So right at the end, the Polytechnic, right at the hmm. end, we got a very comfortable rehearsal space. for a while mm. and there was some problem you know they are very sensitive about males coming into that camp uh, some auto driver did something silly with some student so then you know how it is everything is a reaction then oh shut it down no more outsiders coming in so we lost that rehearsal space so since then spaces have been a struggle but in terms of performance our pillar of our theater has been prithvi i mean the kind of sense of home you know the prithvi gives i mean the, as the way we talk as a matter of right it's amazing i mean you know <laughs> theater people from other parts of the country are amazed at the way we treat prithvi you know we you treat it as a no, it's as a matter of right i mean say hey kunal come on guy or sanjana what happened why aren't the lights working and she oh i'm so sorry no other theater owner ever talks like that you know you take bombay for example it's it's so terrible and the economics of doing theater at prithvi pretty good pretty good in the early days it was hard we always had one flagship production supporting all our other work so akash i'll give you akash's production of uh, tendulkar's ashi pakre yeti mm. which we did mm. as matiya dil a very popular play matiya dil used to get full houses at that time and this would be 80 uh, 87 88 mm. 89 that mm. time mm. okay so get full houses and the money that matiya dil earned supported all my other productions at that time and they would be I started off with striptease and circus, two short plays, mm. uh, and then whatever else followed, mm. pratibim and all that kind mm. of thing. Mm. So these two, we never made money. We lost money, mm. not huge amounts of money, but we used to lose. Mm. So it was the money from Matiya Dilla that supported all this, and that has been our tradition since then. 
There will be one production that is doing well and that has the responsibility of supporting everything else. So today it would be a sex morality and... Well, you know, in the last few years, it's been a bit different in the sense that, you know, just there have been yeah. Cotton 56 did very well. Uh, sex morality has done very well. But yes, sex morality supported walking to the sun and dreams of Tali very clearly. Mm. There's no question about it. Mm. Those two productions could only happen because of sex morality. Uh, now, Stories of the Song is doing very well. Mm. So it will mm. support. But now you have money to actually develop projects, which is so different from what it used to be. I can now work a year in advance because I have money to actually develop a project. That has been Are a huge... Are actors thing. paid today? Or yes. is it the same as... No, we... I'm trying to push to a situation where we pay actors for every show. Writers get paid, actors get paid, technical people get paid. Per uh, show? Yeah. Yeah. Minimum is 500 rupees. Mm. But yeah. in the meanwhile, rentals have also gone up. Doesn't right? matter. We have to find a way. Because now everybody is dependent and it's possible to do it. See, I, actually also Arpana has reached a stage where we can. I think we cracked it with Cotton 56 in the sense that because we got an IFA grant to support the production cost, suddenly, first day of the show we started on even ground, which we could never do before that. Mm -hmm. It used to take us two years to recover the production cost of a play. Forget making money. So typically, let's say a Basuri, how much would have been the production cost? Basuri was actually a zero theatre production, but Basuri was very cheap. It must have been done in under 20,000 rupees. I've done productions in six and seven thousand rupees. If you hadn't got the grant from IFA for cotton, yeah, how much would that have cost you? Uh, cotton, no, cotton cost a lot of money because we Sets painted that huge backdrop and stuff like that. Actors got conveyance money for rehearsal. You know, it was because it was a it was a funded production. The research took some amount of time. Mm -hmm. You know, so all that all that everybody got paid. Chetan got paid. Ramu got paid. I got a small fee. Mm. Um, actors go get conveyance money. Mm. Cotton was upward of three lakhs. Yeah, but Marupi over Rangoon is eight nine lakhs. Mm. I mean, the scale of work has also grown. No? But that's commission, so that. No, it was not commission. What? They didn't pay me to produce. They, they paid me a performance fee, not commission. None of us oh. were commissioned. Oh, okay. No, this our money. That's my my name is Arpana's money, hard earned money in that production. Sex morality got a grant, grant for research. 1.5. Yeah, so they got money, so I could pay Shanta and Iravati and a couple of other people mm. who were working on the script. Mm. The production itself, by then they had run out of money, so they were chan, 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 so very little money. Mm. But we managed to crack that, that you know, you create a fund, you find funding for your production, so that then your shows don't become crazy, you know, where the load on every show to earn, earn, earn is not there. Mm. So it gives you the opportunity to take some risks, mm. you know. Mm. And since none of us make a livelihood out of Arpana, so we are that way very, very fortunate. We don't need to, whatever comes in stays in the kitty. Do you see Arpana changing its model in years, in the next, I mean, how is it going to be? Well, what are your plans? My plan, I'd like to create a second, you know, there was a very nice phase in Arpana when we had two or three directors working. Vinod Ranganath used to direct for us, I used to be a director, uh, Chetan had directed a play for us, okay, uh, Chetan's brother Ashutosh directed a play. Mm. So that was very nice that you had two or three directors working. Mm. Um, I'd really like to come back to that at some point. You know, I'd really like to have a couple of other directors also directing for us. Um, that would be fantastic. Wouldn't having a sort of stable space be... Hugely it would help. I'd love to create a repertory of actors. I'm really finding it extremely difficult now to work because of just managing actors has become such a huge... I don't think that will ever happen, but at least for a production, if I can somehow tie down a group of actors. So that has... These are challenges that need, need to be sorted and out. And the sp space uh, challenge? Well, you know, as long as Prithvi is there, we are somewhat safe. Uh, the reason why Maro Piyu Rangoon was attempted in the commercial space was also to break our dependence on just Prithvi and NCPA, you know. Mm. I needed to get out. See, what happens is that you only have a certain number of limited performance opportunities. Mm. And one particular play is doing well. Mm. Mm. So, and then you want to do two other plays. There's no performance dates available. I mean, how, where do I perform these plays? I can do I can do three productions a year. I have enough ideas for that. But where do I perform them? So now PU has gone into a complete different circuit. It doesn't even impinge on my mm. Prithvi and NCPA dates. 
Mm-hmm. So we are looking at other strategies like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Any particular plays or things that you are you'd like to do or you are thinking? Well, you know, for a while we tried to create a performance. I don't know if you know about this. It ran for almost eight months uh, at the YWCA in Andheri. Mm. on jp road there's a mm. ywc mm. a hostel mm. Mm. and the architect um, something das there was an old well when they were redoing that building or they were building it mm. there was a well there and she put a slab on top and built a few seats around and made a small amphitheater mm. and somehow we got to know about it i think she contacted us etc and then we ran that as a neighborhood performance space for almost 6 to 8 months it was lovely must have been 2002 2003 So about ten yeah. years ago, and we got uh, through Ramu. We got a bank to give us some fifteen or twenty thousand rupees just to cover the cost of bringing in lights and stuff like that. So we used to spend about two, two and a half thousand rupees from our pocket. I mean, from the sponsorship money, mm-hmm. and invite a group to perform. Thali used to go around, and whatever the takings used to go to the group. Mm-hmm. So necessarily small plays were done there, but it had a lovely neighborhood air, and people from the housing societies around would come. Hmm. So we've tried, you know, to create the Sate experiment was exactly that. We wanted to create a small neighborhood theatre. Hmm. So we have been trying. Now there is a new theatre coming up at Goregaon East in a school called hmm. the Nanda Deep School. Hmm. Uh, it's going to be named after Dubey, in fact. It's going to be called the Pandit Satyadev Dubey Natya Graha, whatever. Really? Yeah. And they want to inaugurate it on his death anniversary, twenty fifth of December. Hmm. But it's in a school. We don't know the licensing situation, hmm. you know, etc. But we'll see. We'll try and develop it as the space. Hmm. We'll help in whatever we, way we can. Okay. But there is an urgent need. There's an urgent need for, for the space. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All the same, there seems to be a paradox, and I think we'll end with that for now, which is that Bombay's had such a vibrant, such a multifaceted theatre movement at various times, and yet it's happening in a city which is starved of spaces. Yeah. In every sense. Yeah. So, how do you think this? How how has it happened? I mean, how has it happened? You know, it's not just the space; it's also the kind of resources. You know, this 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 so-called vibrant theatre movement. At least in numbers, it definitely is vibrant. Uh, you may have you know differences of opinion about what the quality of what is being done, mm, yeah. but it happens entirely without any support, man. It's amazing. Nowhere incredible? in the world does this happen. Yes. No, for example, I mean, the rest of India. Of other cities. In yeah. India. Nowhere in the world does this kind of theatre people. the entire community is subsidizing the work actors are subsidizing it technicians directors writers now there is some payback coming in you know, what monetary terms little mm. bit of money is coming back to them you know there is a but for the longest time so if there's a boom in television there's a boom in theater because money from television is coming to theater you know so it's it's amazing i i i I think there is there 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 we are very very fortunate we are very fortunate we have a tradition you know there is a tradition there are two very strong performing traditions in the city the marathi theater and the gujarati theater they've mm-hmm. been going on for years so they are very solid there in the background mm-hmm. i mean a lot of our young guys don't even know about it but whatever the point is mm-hmm. it's there mm-hmm. and that also leads to ancillary services available mm-hmm. na mm-hmm. you have set people you have lighting people you yes. have equipment there is a whole buzz is there yes. uh, that helps a lot I think a lot of it helps a lot that the film industry and television industry is mm. in Bombay so that is providing a lot of employment to people so they can afford to continue doing theater you mm. can't do that in Delhi for instance mm. or in Calcutta Calcutta now yes Bengali television does but also we've had fortunately the tradition of theater people dipping into this and not letting go of theater you know mm. that 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 facility has been there somehow the seniors have set the trend you know mm. a lot of Senior actors who do theatre, hmm. who also insist that no, sorry, if I have a theatre date, I'm going to honour that. So that recognition is there. I think that's hugely helpful. And it continues. It to continues. Today. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Today, our young actors uh, get called to do a television series or a. The first is these are my theatre dates. I'm not going to be available on those dates. And and that is honoured then. And reasonably, I would say, unless you're very new, hmm. but reasonably. Not, not. I mean, it's quite amazing. It's quite so. I, you know, I had a sudden show of Piyu Veer Angun on one day, which was not planned, and Chirag had just signed on a big television series, which un- unfortunately since then has mm. collapsed, and he had to do a promo shoot in Delhi, and I said, no, Chirag, I want you in Tejpal at eight o'clock. He caught a five. His producer agreed. They paid for him to catch a five p.m. flight from Delhi, zip to Bombay, just got onto stage at ten past eight, performed. Went back to the airport and caught a flight back to Delhi. They paid for it. They value the fact that theatre actors bring something with them. You know, they got a huge pool of 
reasonably experienced actors because of theater where would you get it otherwise hmm. so i think there is some respect and give and take and you know which is nice which is nice our audience is also becoming more uh, clear vocal and visible to people in theater today as compared to <coughs> what they were in the past i mean or would you say that's i think the kind of audiences that we are performing to are not like that they are they are consumers we get a lot of consumer audiences which is all right i mean you know i am not the, i don't believe in putting theater on a pedestal and making it a special art form of course we must compete in the market with everybody else that's mm. the only way thank god yeah. so we are surviving if we had constantly demanded a special space we would have because this society has no value for art etc is a separate thing which is unfortunate but the point is that's the reality so then you have to go out there and compete and you have to use various and strategies make work. and make them work and mm. you know frankly i mean yeah, for instance a lot of people say my theater is middle of the road and i say yes it is middle of the road uh, it's not that one doesn't want to do other things but this is this is the way that i have sort of found in order to i bring in the audiences they come i'm confident that i'm going to give them something to take back with them mm. and that's how it is okay in such a situ- situation our audience has changed in that sense that i would say in the chabil das days it was a far more discerning audience i mean you could be challenged this is not art you know today no audience is going to come and say this is not art you know theater is supposed to be mm-hmm. art this is not art you don't get that in those days there would be those kind of questions if you did would get up. that would you be surprised when today yeah. i would be hugely surprised and i'd be very thrilled wow 